Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys. Peep game. All right, man. Check this out. All right, man. So let me talk about um, Power Book 2 Ghosts uh, continuing to uh, break down these characters. Now, let's talk about Riley and Brayton. You know it. A.K.A. the white people from the show. So, as you guys know, Riley is the nosy niece of Cooper Sacks, who basically Cooper Sacks really put her life in jeopardy because he knows what type of dude Ghost is. And he should kind of think, well, damn, this is his son. But then he didn't find out till later that, you know, basically Tyreek offed his father. But once he found it out, he should have, you know, told his niece to basically leave this situation alone because, you know, it's too dangerous. But, you know, Cooper is so self-observed and he'll do anything to get his man, as they used to say when it came to, uh, you know, that's, you know, cops and feds and all that type of shit. He's not thinking about the danger he's putting his niece in. But. At the end of the day, based off the fact that his niece drugged Tyreek, that eventually cost him the case and the job when it <laughs> when basically the judge found out and basically Cooper Sack's boss found out. Then you have Brayton, um, the thrill seeking rich white kid who's had everything given to him on a silver spoon, but he has this fascination with street life and and thugism, if that's a word, you know. But I figure, hey, if Don King can make up words, then so can I. But he has this fascination with wanting to be, you know, a, a, a drug, a drug dealer. He talking about he's good at it. He's turned on by. It. And you know, the funny thing is, it's people like Brayton in real life. You know, the 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 white boy who had this fascination with black culture and black people and he he feel like this is his world where he fits in at where a lot of people would kill to be in a position he in where parents gave him everything didn't have to work for nothing but he basically feel like this is his way you know into a new world or something or trying to fit in trying to find himself you know it's people like him that exist for real like there was this story uh, this 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 white boy like in LA he was a rich white kid but once again he had this fascination with black street culture and shit and now his 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 ass is sitting up in jail because basically they let him join a crip set and basically he ended up being a accessory to you know to somebody being taken out now I really could do a video <laughs> about that particular subject within itself for like basically letting a white boy join a black gang to harm it, it I, I don't even want to go that route but yeah but people like Brayton exist for real so you know you look at Brayton's character he is really turned on by this but he has shown some loyalty towards Tyreek I do like that one episode <laughs> where basically he asks uh, Effie and Tyreek, is it cool for him to say the N word? And they both said at the same time, absolutely not. I kind of like the idea that they address that, that topic right quick, you know, but they didn't really, you know, I'm glad they didn't really make that the vocal point of the show, but I'm glad they addressed it. Even though I try to tell black people, stop calling white people the N-word yourself. But then you trying to police them on saying it back to you. Like, it's kind of like hypocrisy. You know what I'm saying? You tell them, hey, you can't say this word. It's offensive and all this type of shit. But then you calling them that word. Of course, they don't think it's cool to say it. Like I said before, I don't call them that word. I don't walk up to no Mexican and say, you know, call them the N word. I only say that around around pretty much black people 
worst case scenario Samoans, but <laughs> worst case scenario, and I don't say it around all of them, but but yeah. So, you know, as far as those two characters go, I think Riley, you you just could tell that eventually her curiosity is going to cost her her life eventually down the line because you could see it coming. The question is, who going to take her out? Will it be Kane? Will it be Brayden? Or will it be Tyreek? You just know that it's coming eventually. Now, how long she going to last is a, mis is, is a mystery or a question, but you know eventually Riley's nosiness is going to cost her her life. You just you just see you just see it coming. You just see it coming. You just like, yeah. Now as far as Brayden go, I think Brayden is probably gonna be put in a situation where he's gonna have to step up his game. And I think he gonna be called to the carpet by either Kane or Tyreek, or he gonna be put in a situation where he really gonna have to show he down. And then the question is, once he crosses that line, that's going to show you how deep he really, really is into this game. So I think Brayton is going to be very interesting to see what he does next year. But I really think that his loyalty and how bad he want to be in the, in, in, in the dope game or the drug game is going to be tested. The question is, is he willing to get dirty? Cause he didn't, he didn't see the money part and, you know, breaking the, you know, breaking the drugs down, putting it together and organizing, but he ain't seen the violence that comes attached to it. So you really finna see how he going to handle that situation. So, you know, so, you know, we about to find out next year. But anyway, this your boy Town Biz. I'm out.